Hi, welcome to a weekly update. This is Kim speaking on Monday, the goodness, I'm forgetting, 3rd of October. <laughs> then the weeks go past so quickly. I was still thinking of September. I was hoping it was still September, but there we are. It is already October. Now, uh, before I start on the update, just a um, reminder if you haven't already seen it on Thursday, the 13th of October, um, Charlie's doing a swing trading webinar. Now, um, I would strongly recommend if you're considering trading of any sorts, if you're an intraday trader, I don't care, or an end of day uh, trader, um, this will, will will be worth your time. Um, I'm sure it probably uh, is programmed for about an hour or so, but I'm sure, as I say, uh, it will be worth your time considering uh, possibly adding some swing to your intraday analysis would be a great idea and if you haven't got time to intraday trade swing trading is for you so um, 13th of October um, for your diary I, as I say I'll put the webinar link on the bottom of this email right enough of that let's get on and uh, talk about the markets themselves and I'm looking at the euro dollar first now the euro's been in quite a tight range and it's, it's certainly from your, what you can see here that's no exaggeration and when you come to the daily picture it's not a lot clearer I mean uh, last week it looked at one stage that it was going to go somewhere and the rest of the week just sort of went pretty pretty much sideways. It doesn't make it a good pair to trade at the moment, but I am looking at a couple of things and it's uh, uh, almost almost the obvious I'm considering here. If I can get a close above that 500 MA, I'm looking uh, much more at the upside. Ideally, it will break that trend line there as well at uh, around about 12.84 at the moment, but I mean, that may vary as we run through. Um, if the euro starts selling off and we see some dollar strength coming through well i've got a decent trend line there i am really bearish that side at the moment i'm neutral intraday it's not really giving me enough points to trade i've probably possibly missed a couple of opportunities possibly friday will get gave us probably the biggest day for some time but uh, the thing is you stop looking at it to a certain extent but it may when it, when it consolidates like this what generally happens is you get a decent move not necessarily as big as this one over here uh, but you, you often get a decent move out of it so I am looking uh, for the opportunities out of that and it may be for, come from an intraday point of view it may come from an end of day uh, point of view okay looking at cable Start look at the weeklies first and you see we're heading back down to that week commencing the 4th of July just after Brexit through a couple of weeks after Brexit when it's selling it continued to sell off there and we, we, we're really pushing towards that the, the trend is certainly continued to the downside as I said last week got to be bearish on this at the moment I had a few opportunities last week to trade it but it did get a little bit choppy at times um, eventually, I mean, tested this trend line that was running across there early week on the Monday there, 26, and then pretty much uh, bounced from it, then sold off Thursday. Friday didn't do too much, held onto it, but today we've seen it, well, say today, Sunday stroke this morning, we've seen a, a, a break and a sell off for most of the day there. So, where's it leading us? Really, um, I'm, I'll be looking cl closely at that pre those previous lows there, around about the 128.10 area, maybe just fractionally below that, actually, I think it is. Um, so, looking at that 128 area and watching to see if we get a break of that. If that starts breaking down, well, I think well, we could be on heading south towards the 25.77 area. Looking at this, I'll just spread, bring this into a bit bigger picture there so selling off towards the uh, monthly uh, S2 area would be quite a reasonable second point and a good target there's a uh, little if I just switch this very briefly to a weekly chart it's gonna be a bit messy because of the pivots there but there's, there's nothing in terms of other support apart from prior data from way 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 back um, so um, this actually I I'm going to go back to the test one here and just chuck the monthly on here. And you can see we're already below the lows. We've already broken the lows of the um, 2009, 2008-2009 lows there, well and truly taken out. And it's, well, just continuing. I mean, you're going to have to go some way to uh, get lower than this. <laughs> so um, that's where it is at the moment. Um, I have to be bearish at the moment from what we're seeing here. Um, it's uh, 
it, it sort of worked off its oversold point of view from the weekly perspective before, but uh, it's certainly pushing on south at the moment. Dolly Yen. Now, the Dolly Yen, I was expecting and possibly I'm still expecting uh, the potential for a, a, some more downside here, but uh, it's, well, having a bit of a rally. And uh, last week it ended up quite reasonably on the on a doji candle there. And at the moment it's already started pushing up. If we just come to where we are, it's just changes back to daily. And as you can see, it's sort of if anything, it's looking like it wants to break this trend line. Now, a close above that and the, the, the monthly pivot and that trend line would see me looking potentially at the bullet, bullish opportunities. I'm not totally convinced we're finished in this downside. So if it hits the monthly pivot and finds some resistance near the prior highs there, uh, which almost come together, I would be looking at uh, potentially trying to short that, but uh, that may happen through the Asian session. We'll see. Okay, um, Aussie dollar, bullish Aussie dollar at the moment, and it's uh, it's well, you can see it's from the weekly perspective, it's it's in a bit of a wedgy pattern at the moment. It's running across here, so we, we're sort of sitting there in that sort of tight tightish. Pattern. Let's just bring that trend line up here as well. You see, we're quite in some weekly wedge. And now it put a, a weekly pivot swing in the previous week. Last week we saw some continuation run into the resistance of the, the trend of the upper part of the wedge there. Now it looks like it wants to push back up for that. If it starts moving up, we could easily see, uh, well, 7770, 78, and maybe start pushing back to the upside there. From a daily perspective, well, they, there's the, there's the near-term trend. If we can get above that and close above that, we're not going to do it today. It's a shame, actually. We could end up it rallied towards the end of this session. We could end up with a bit of a pivot swing, but if it starts pushing off from there, um, I sort of remain bullish on the uh, Aussie dollar from that perspective. Moving on to the Canadian dollar, and whenever I look at the Canadian dollar, I look at the oil price in general. But well, I'll tell you, the oil price has been pushing up, and we've not seen much reaction from that gain on the Canadian dollar, mainly through US strength, a bit of Canadian weakness, effectively. So it's not really given us the, the rally I may have expected, and the, and the bigger move down last week. It sort of comes and goes, and it's it's not quite as I mean it's it sold off for a couple of days last week it uh, looked good um, and uh, even when oil was actually still coming out uh, pushing up there on the, the Thursday into the Friday it, it just really wasn't going with it in fact let's just pop the oil there holes saying that yeah there's oils running up day after day there running towards the sort of $50 sort of mark now if this starts turning it of course back for its monthly pivot We'll see the Canadian dollar most most likely uh, break back above that 200 moving average. But it's been playing with it, getting up close to it all that time. It reacted to it. It sold. It put bearish pivot swing in. It never really followed through with any any gusto. Which, well, as my my analysis still really, but the divergence that we got at the highs there would suggest that we. We might still see the potential for a breakdown, and if, we, if oil pushes up and it gains any sort of uh, further traction, we could uh, see a break of the pivot. In which case, uh, then I'm, I'm a break of the monthly pivot below that monthly pivot. I'm bearish, and I'll be trying to trade it back down, maybe down to the monthly S1. Prior lows are just below that. So that's pretty much it with my normals. Let's see if it, just a quick look at uh, as we're seeing such movement. Uh, with the the pound, I thought well, let's have a look at the FTSE and see what it's up to, and it's really benefiting a uh, weak pound. As uh, you've seen the the FTSE flying up already this week, it's moved a third of what we saw the whole movement last week by the looks of things, and it's uh, last week turned round and left us with this sort of hanging man picture. But uh, at the moment, pushing up. From the daily's point of view, what I'm seeing at the moment is an uh, inverted head and shoulders, which could see um, further upside here now. So certainly the potential and the sort of distance here from this uh, head possibly pushing up towards uh, the monthly R2 area. They were almost already at the R1 at 700, but that 
to me looks like it could even push further maybe over the next week so bullish bullish picture there and then let's just go and have a look at um, the S&P's delayed picture but it's fine and the S&P's making a bit of a recovery last Friday sort of it's um, quite choppy at the moment um, in terms of what we're seeing here but again we've got this sort of uh, a bit of a trend line coming across here it's not totally convincing maybe across there somewhere but if we could move back into that uh, break push back up we could be heading for those prior highs there and back into looking for new highs back into the monthly uh, or back towards that yet yeah, last month's r1 uh, or even higher into uh, this month's r1 there okay um that's pretty much it for the week um in terms of technicals let's just look at uh, what fundamentals we've got coming out we've already seen uh, some UK data out today, which came in better than expected, but didn't really rock the pound too much in terms of uh, giving it much of a positive kick. It moved about 24 pips and then sort of was very slow, but uh, then sold off later. Uh, would not surprise him taking into account the Brexit uh, scene, and I think that will hold the, the pound down and possibly push it down some more. But we, we in the short term. We've got some data coming out this week. We've got the uh, construction PMI at 9.30 tomorrow. But before I talk about that, we've got the Australian cash rate Reserve Bank of Australia meeting at 4.30 um, this uh, this coming morning through the Asian session, which uh, may give the, the, the Aussie a bit of a, a kicker. But uh, we'll see uh, one way or the other. Um, it may actually do what I'm asking it to do whilst I'm asleep tonight. Um, we've got some construction PMI uh, coming in. Uh, which uh, was, was just looking it did actually come in slightly better than expected last time it, if it gives another positive figure may give the pound a smaller move the important thing here is when I'm seeing these uh, these fundamental data uh, this fundamental data coming out and the pound barely moving it shows you the weakness of the pound there so if the figure did come out less than expected we could probably get quite a kicker and a sell-off of the pound uh, moving into Wednesday we've got um, Australian retail sales, which is volatility at 130 that day, and then services PMI at 930 on for the UK, for the pound. We, it's a busy week. We've got non-farm payrolls at 115, which is starting to give us it's the ADP that numbers. Whilst they're almost meaningless, they still gives the market quite a kicker. And then we move into the non-manufacturing PMI for the US at three. So there's some some good numbers coming out, which could give some good volatility. Uh, later in the week, then we've got um, uh, trade balance, Aussie trade balance, which is quite a big figure for the Aussie dollar. Uh, we've got the uh, ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. They don't tend to move it too much, but it's, it's due there Thursday at 12:30. Um, maybe something in there someone's missed, but uh, doesn't really give us a, much of a kicker. But leading into Friday, and of course we've got non-farm payrolls coming out at 1:30. So. Um, 9:30 in the morning, we've got manufacturing production in the UK, which uh, could give the pound again, give some volatility around 9:30. Thereafter, it's really non-farm payrolls at 1:30 to be watching and um, seeing if we can get some trades out. That's it for me. Um, hope you have a great week. I'll speak to you next week. Bye for now.